there's a little bit of quiet, but Austin, the Glenn, and Tina are able to tune in. Dylan Westbrook will start from the pole, comes in third place in points behind the two drivers tied for the top spot, that being Jim Hoopinen and Mac DeMann. And Dylan, after a couple of weeks of some misfortune, Still only five points out of first, so a, a solid night tonight can put him right back at the top of the pile as we get ready for the green flag here on Frankie Turkey Memorial Night. Good start for Dylan Westbrook. Steve Lyons couldn't make that move on Derek Jonathan down into turn number one. That's going to open the door for Ryan Turner in the Kingpin 91 to take over third. And, and Doug Leonard did not like that start. Seven, you go back to road nine, you come to the front with the 81. Lights are out. Nine ahead of the 47 to the front row with the 81. Doug Leonard did not like that start. Thought Dylan Westbrook got, uh, got off to a fairly quick advantage. We've got to welcome all of our fans who are watching a rain delay at Daytona Speedway. They can keep all the rain. Just watch Friday Night Excitement here at Ashwick and Speedway. There are no tapered spacers on our 360 sprint cars, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Lyons now, along with Derek Jonathan, will bring us to the green flag. And looks like we have a better start that time. Steve Lyons will lead them down into corner number one with Dylan Westbrook in his tire tracks. What a different view for Steve Lyons. He had a clear racetrack going into one. He could decide what line he wanted to use. And boy, oh boy, he's backing up those fast practice times. He'll lead lock number one. Down into corner one, he goes slinging that one wide open and uh, stretching it a little bit on Dylan Westbrook. Side by side for the third spot with Ryan Turner and Derek Jonathan put Turner up to spot number three. Great battles deeper in the field with Corey Turner throwing a slide job on Scott Shirk in the 43. Meanwhile, the gap at the front has closed just a little bit as Steve Lyons holding off Dylan Westbrook, but he's right there within striking distance as we complete lap number three of eight in this one. Lyons out in front by about six car lengths. They're pulling away from Ryan Turner, but Westbrook hasn't quite found the line that'll close him up on Lyons' rear tail. Oh, and as I say, that problem for Steve Lyons waving his hand out the left side of that race car. Terrible, terrible luck for Steve Lyons as he will coast to a, a stop. It looks like up on the high side. Not sure as though he'll be able to make it to the pit area as we continue under green. With three laps left to go, and Steve might be able to. Well, no, caution will finally come out for Steve Lyons. Now we'll never know. How heartbreaking is that for Steve Lyons? Just came off of corner four, and the car just stopped. And you can see him waving his arm frantically. Green flag, it'll be Dylan Westbrook leading over Ryan Turner. Derek Jonathan back in the third spot. Corey Turner sits in fourth. Aaron Turkey running fifth. And it's Travis Cunningham back in position sixth. And Scott Shirk in seventh. Kyle McKenzie, green flag high in the air. Dylan Westbrook, he doesn't want to get burnt again for jumping that start. He's going to wait till he's all the way to the cone. Green flag in the air. Now he steps on the throttle. And Ryan Turner keeps pace as they go down into corner number one right there hanging with Dylan Westbrook. Westbrook, though, will stretch it just a little bit off of corner two. Derek Jonathan made a nice turn one and two there. Carried a good bit of speed off the corner behind him. Aaron Turkey trying to put the challenge to Corey Turner in the 13th. Down through one and two they go. Turner on the bottom of Derek Jonathan working for that third position. Now Turner looks up a little bit higher into corner three and dives down low in corner four with one lap left to go. Down through one and two. Westbrook leading the way. I mean, like I say, I'm enjoying watching Derek Jonathan hold off Corey Turner. Turner loves his slide job in three and four. He drives to the bottom, slides up in front of the 81. Can Jonathan turn underneath? And no, Corey Turner going to finish third. Derek Jonathan fourth. Aaron Turkey fifth. And it's Travis Cunningham and Scott Shirk. So once again, Dylan Westbrook will pick up the win in the Sovereign Fusion Original Traders Energy Burford Heating and Air Conditioning car number 46. Dylan Westbrook, another heat race win, comes in five points out of the point lead coming in to tonight. Don't forget to get those 50-50 tickets. Sellers going through. Seen it. Come out and check it out on a Thursday night. So who's going to be announcing the stream? It will be Jackson. 
uh, Caitlin DeBoer, and my son McLean. Awesome. So uh, should be interesting to see how the youngsters do on camera. McLean's not nervous at all. He's uh, pretty excited about it. That's awesome. Green flag is out, Jamie Turner. And Dan Anacoke lead them through the corner with the straight shooter, Scott Cruder, right back there behind them in third. Shane Ross with an <laughs> aggressive move into turn one, and then he kind of had to play some defense and feather his way. Oh! Oh, I'm glad he missed that wall. My goodness. That is going to bring out a yellow, I'm sure. Because Dan Nanikoke's car dead in the water. That made my heart just about stop. Yeah, that was a, uh, a hard impact. And then the, the line that he was on headed down into corner number one. I thought, like you, he was going to clip that wall. Or even worse, end up in the infield. I've got uh, other interests that are down in the infield that I'm always keeping an eye on. <laughs> well, you're not getting I haven't used it probably in 15 to 20 years. Could I borrow it? <laughs> These. The last time I used it, Dave Farney was flagging, I'm sure. Give it up. <laughs> Back to the green with Jamie Turner, who's been noticeably uh, stronger here in the last couple of weeks. Good for him out in front in that Mudcat Entertainment Center number 11. There's drivers who on a smooth racetrack will do much, much better. Jamie Turner's been racing a long, long time. I dare say he's been racing long enough that he doesn't need to race through craters and potholes. He's not interested, but give him a smooth racetrack like this where he can really go out and play, have some fun. He's all over that. Scott Cruder to the top of the board in car number 49. The straight shooter works it off a of corner four, this time by the complete lap number three. Kruder with a smooth, smooth line. Look at that. He turns that steering wheel once into the corner, maybe one or two more times, but by and large, he just finds that one spot and rides it all the way around the end. Kruder stretching the advantage over Jamie Turner. Then it's Shane Ross back there, who's had a nice run from the back of the field up into this third spot. Holly Porter started eighth as well. She's into the fourth position. Mitch Brown kind of hanging back there in fifth. Holly Porter's left rear tire looks almost flat to me. And it does a little soft on number one there for Holly Porter, who's running that down uh, bottom groove right now. As at the front, it's the opposite for Scott Cruder, who's hanging it out on that outside line and getting it done in the 49. Josh Hansen just swung a wide out of turn four, just about caught the concrete on the corner exit. White flag is out for Scott Cruder. Final time around for the straight shooter who had uh, a what looked like a sure win taken away from him a couple of weeks ago. We'll find the checkered flag in the qualifying heat. The 49K will pick up the win over Jamie Turner. Then it's Shane Ross. Holly Porter comes home fourth. Fifth will be Mitch Brown. Sixth is Todd Hoddick. And seventh will go to Josh Hansen with Dan Nanico finishing with a DNF in the spot number eight. Getting reports that Dan Nanakoke, the chassis, actually broke at the back of oh. that race car. But he is okay. Thank you for that report. Yeah, those race cars can be fixed, but car number 87X, Sean Evans, who had that uh, rocket ride last week that made uh, social media turns uh, a plenty. Sean Evans back there in position number five, going from the sixth spot, tied for the point lead after his win last Friday night. In the Bradshaw Brothers Oshwikin Speedway number zero, the Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen from Fenwick, and going from the seventh and final starting spot in the ERW contracting, car number nine B from Charing Cross, that is Scott Burke. Green flag flies on the third and final sprint car heat today. Back to man uses the outside line to get by Jake Brown and takes the top spot. Brown back to second, here comes Sean Evans. Looks down deep on Jake through corner four. And Jim Hoopin and watching him in that Ashwikin Speedway Zero. Remember that car was put. Oh, back to man off into the pits. A problem for the 17. Crazy situation there for the leader. More than uh, the first time we've seen that here tonight as Sean Evans now will lead his teammate 
assumes the top spot with Jim Hoopinen and Jake Brown going at it for second. Here comes Brown on the outside down the back stretch. And Hoopinen worked hard to keep that car down on the bottom in case Brown had a big run. Then off the corner, he drifted up in front of the 110. Now we'll try to track down Sean Evans in that Hills Racing number 87 Ackland Insurance sponsored machine. In the corner numbers three and four they go. Sean Evans works it down across the stripe to complete lap number four. Halfway home in this third and final qualifier for our 360 Sprint Car Division. Jim Hoopinen right there in second that was closing the gap on the rookie driver. Down to the bottom goes Hoopinen on Sean Evans. Evans hangs on to the top spot for one more lap as we're five laps down, three laps to go. Hoopin and washes up the banking in quarter number two and gets back on his ponies here and sets his sights back on Sean Evans. Dives it back down deep in corners three and four. Two laps left to go for the Red Rocket to catch Sean Evans. Evans doing a nice job. He's doing what he has to do, running the line he wants to run. But boy, the last lap, he's kind of lost lost his marks a little bit. And now Hoopin and going to head to the outside as Evans drives to the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, Evans got really high in corner number two. Jim Hoopin and now working that outside line, winds it up. Now we'll duck down low in corner two and we'll dive down to the lead. So put Jim Hoopin into the top of the scoring pylon with two corners remaining. Down through three and four, Jim Hoopin and going to take the checkered flag over Sean Evans. Coming home in third is Jake Brown. Fourth, the slider. Rounding out the top five is Scott Burke. And, and we have to give this shout out to Glenn's Tires. Took me a bit to figure this out, but I got it live on Facebook. Such a great view. I don't know if you can say that. Such a great view, says the guy from Bora Bora <laughs> sitting on a patio. <laughs> but we're glad you're watching, boss. I hope you're having a great time. Say hi to everybody. And he just got to see his machine pick up the checkered flag in the heat race win with Jim Hoopin, and who's been very stout since taking over the zero. Don't tell him the car was smoking. The Edwards Construction and Excavating, number 43. And then we've got Mac Demand, the highlight man from Mississauga, Ontario. He'll line up back there in position, number 21. Steve Lyons goes 22nd, and Dan Nanakoke will go 23rd as we get ready for the double greens with Jim Hoopin. Scott Cruder on the front row, the A main for the Cool Kids Ice and Water Core Pack merchandising sprint cars. Clean start down. Oh, not so much. One in turn number one has come up lane. The yellow flag flies. A huge bar off of somebody's car flew into the infield in corner number one. I don't know if it was the side rail off of Dylan Westbrook's car or what it was, but a huge rail piece landed down the inside. And that's uh, Shane Ross who made the contact along with Dylan Westbrook, and there was another car involved as well. Greg, I've seen a lot of skies in my time here at Oshweek, and, and it's always... <laughs> with the changing hues of, we have seen storms blow past in the last 45 minutes on the back straightaway. It is uncanny. Pretty wide coming down the front straightaway. He pushed in the middle and uh, got caught there. So he is gonna take his two minutes Dave in the Bailey way. is indeed racing tonight. He's got a fresh power plant in that number 49. Thank you for the note. We're gonna try to set them loose once again. Jim Hoopinen in the Ash Weekend Speedway number zero. Scott Cruder in the black 49 on the outside of row number one. Green flag comes out again. We'll see if we can get through quarters one and two cleanly this time around as they all shuffle down in there. And what a run right there by Scott Cruder. Dives to the inside of Jim Hoopinen, takes the lead, and he will have it off a of corner four. Hoopin in second, Ryan Turner third. A little bit of dust coming off of turn number four. That'll be making visibility tough for drivers near the back of the field as Jim Hoopin and trying to fight back on the bottom. Hoopin and got that first win with tires racing one week ago, looking for another one here. That one was a race cut short by the weather and he didn't get to celebrate in victory lane. Here he is challenging again. Scott Kruder, but Kruder pulls away by a couple of car lengths into three. A couple of cars have started deep in this field that are fun to watch right now. Steve Lyons in the nine, Mac Demand in the 17. They've passed a few cars. They're working the outside. A lot of the traffic in that part of the field 
seems to be running the bottom of the racetrack, leaving the outside open, and Steve Lyons is taking advantage. And if you're just tuning in and wondering, well, how did Steve Lyons, Mac Man, get back there? Steve Lyons, while leading his race, that car went out of gear. And then Mac Demand, while leading his qualifying, he just drove it straight into the pits, and uh, we never did find out what the issue was there. But uh, Jake Brown, nonetheless, tucks in behind those two after his own excursion in corner three. Out in front, Scott Kruder leading the way by about 12 car lengths over Hoopinen in the zero. He's a lap or two away from lap traffic. Another driver we need to give a shout out to is Kevin Pauls, the driver of the 46. He was probably three seconds slower than the rest of the field in the first week or two of this season. He's now to the point where he's almost running with the pack. He will be the first car to go a lap down, but doing a much nicer job in that 46 machine. Yeah, Kevin Pauls has been very impressive uh, getting his feet wet here in the 360, jumping up from the Thunderstocks and that Jason Enterprises Bondi Line Automotive number 46 as the leaders get by him. Now they'll set their sights on Scott Shirt and go back a couple of weeks. This was the car that gave such trouble to uh, Scott Kruder was Scott Shirk, and here he comes off a corner four. Shirk stays way to the bottom. I mean, Shirk almost to the infield to stay out of the way of the race leaders. A great job by that driver. Obviously didn't intend for what happened no. a couple of weeks ago with Scott Kruder, but nonetheless, he's... he's Keeping his car down to the bottom, allowing the lead lap cars to get around and have their own battle. Scott Berg gets lapped now as Jim Hoopinen has kept pace with Scott Kruder and Corey Turner now has closed the gap on second place as Ryan Turner and Dylan Westbrook now are into the fray. Ryan Turner just made a great move to get past Dylan Westbrook. Westbrook pedaling hard on the outside. The other drivers work on the bottom of the racetrack. Ryan just gets around Corey. So does Dylan Westbrook as they race off turn two. Good fight there for that third spot as Dylan Westbrook closing the gap on Jim Hoopinen, but Ryan Turner not going away. He fights on the bottom of the 47X. Across the stripe they go. 11 laps are on the board. Nine to go with your leader right now being Scott Kruder, Jim Hoopinen second, Westbrook third. Fourth right now is Corey, uh, make that Ryan Turner fifth, Corey Turner. Kruder is holding a pretty wheel right now up on the outside, but Josh Hansen and Jake Brown are side by side, battling for position just in front of the race leader. He passes his teammate in Todd Hoddock, does Scott Kruder the leader, now sets his sights on Jake Brown, and here comes the challenge for second. Does Dylan Westbrook slide job right in front of Jim Hoopinen? I'm not sure Jim Hoopinen would have enjoyed that slide job, but he's going to return the favor there. Didn't quite have him lined up to complete that slider, but Hoopinen back to third. Dylan Westbrook up to second as laps are winding down. That gap between first and second closing rapidly. Six laps left to go. The straight shooter holds it down, but D-Dubs is on a mission trying to get back towards the front with the caution flag coming out. We got one stop to the entryway of pit lane, and it's Aaron Turkey coming to a stop. Let's see if Jim Hoopinen rolls up on Westbrook in the 47. Aaron Turkey climbing out of that 68. I almost wonder if there was some hot fluid came out of that car. Yeah, he looked to be getting out of the car as quickly as he could and, and then having some issues as he got out. Well, see, Mac Demand, what's his advantage every week? He's ah. got cojones the size yeah. of beach balls, and the racetrack being as rough as it is it really pays off. We're on a smooth racetrack where a lot of people can get up to speed, so it, a little bit more challenging for Mac Demand. Back to the green flag, a couple of lap cars mixed in there as we've got Jake Brown and Todd Honick, that blue 110, and the black and orange 94 lap down. So your top three right now are Scott Kruder in first, Dylan Westbrook in second, and Jim Hoopinen riding in third. Jake Brown keeping down to the inside in that 110. That allows lots of room for Westbrook to get around on the outside. Five laps to go. So Scott Kruder looking for redemption after having that bad crash a couple of weeks ago out in front, stretching his advantage over Dylan Westbrook. And uh, if you go back about a month ago with Scott Kruder, he was showing some frustration. He didn't know what it was going to take to beat Dylan Westbrook. Tonight, maybe he can find out. Still got four laps left to go, make it three this time by, but uh, this could be the night for Scott Kruder. And that car is a little bit angry in three and four. One and two, it looks great. Down three and four last time, it really got twitchy on him. Much better line this time coming off of four with two laps to go. 
Jim Hoopinen settled in there in that third spot, really not challenging anymore on the back end of Dylan Westbrook as we got problems down in corner four. Dan Anico had issues. Everyone keeps going straight. Somehow the leaders come down the front stretch for the white flag. Gruder by 10 car lengths over Dylan Westbrook. One more lap to go. He looks at a lot of lap traffic down the back straightaway. Cruder into some heavy lap traffic. Here he goes up the high side. Dylan Westbrook trying to close the gap, but it won't be enough. Checkers come out. Scott Cruder straight shoots into victory lane. Dylan Westbrook will come home in second. Jim Hoopinen, the another solid performance. Up there in the top three. Hard not to be happy for Scott Cruder and the whole racing team after what they've been through this season the amount of work they've had to put in re repairing those cars replacing those cars uh, and it's paid off with a great victory well, fireworks lights up the sky here at Oshwekin Speedway our official firework provider Lomo fireworks over on highway 54 Middleport if you need some fireworks for some summer celebrations this year like Scott Cruder's having right now you can get those alone fireworks.